Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well, and welcome to tonight's second half. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click the like button. takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into tonight's second half, shall we? The other day, I did an upload where I shared a little bit of more information on the members of the naval intelligence that did a deep dive into the USS Nimitz Tic Tac videos, the two, only one was released to the public, and how one of the members, Axelrod, his family, were stalked and kind of targeted by the government, I truly believe, using paranormal and cryptid activity. Um, being that they lived in Virginia, I thought of there being a connection um, with what Victor had shared with us. Bases underground for the werewolf dog man breeding program and such. And it made sense to me. Uh, interestingly enough, Someone commented in the comment section, who is Victor and how can I listen to his uploads? Well, I emailed the publishing company yesterday to see where we're at on the book. Um, hopefully by Monday, I will have a response. I didn't think I'd get one today or this weekend, obviously. But, um, you know, I just really miss Victor, miss talking to him and... This person just really was interested in what he had to say and what he could learn from him in his old uploads. And I said, well, there's a playlist. Check this out. And that got me thinking, you know, what what was the interview that he shared just a, a ton of experiences and information with us on? And this is the one. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, tonight I have a special guest, and we have been trying to get a time where he is not busy and where he can have a few minutes to sit down with us and discuss a couple of things. We were going to do a encounter uh, that he had, but instead we looked back and got a really good idea kind of a uh, one out one zero one on the dogman Bigfoot Sasquatch rating them from danger to humans and description behaviors etc on the big three so Victor how are you doing well how's everybody out there how are you too I am doing well and it's always a pleasure to hear from you so um, thank you I know that you have been absolutely super busy um, with what's been going on with your work and stuff, and you really haven't had a lot of time to uh, put together an encounter with, you know, paperwork, so that just nothing bites you in the ass at the end, you know, um, that way you have a, you know, 100% 
truths out of out of the story so why don't we do that 101 i i think we both agree that that sounds good so um okay uh we'll start with the, the well first really quick a lot of people have been curious on what the difference between a dog man and a werewolf is so we'll kind of start with the dog man and then work our way to sasquatch how about that that works for me all right Okay, a uh, general description of a dog man. On the average, male, they grow to about seven and a half to eight, just eight foot. Range of weight anywhere from about 350 to maybe pushing 475 to 500 pounds. Dogman's got a tail and an extended snout covered for except on the underneath side. It's center on the what you would call the belly or the chest. The back legs are still muscular. They are more human, not human-like, but or like dogs. They they got the hocks to them. And uh, they can travel on them very rapidly. They can run probably 35 to 40 miles an hour. They, the upper body, the uh, arms are more human-like with hands with very long extended Fingers with anywhere from the claws or anywhere from inch and a half to four inches, depending on age. Uh, they've got a very long neck. Most of them, you can tell it. You know, like a like a dog. They've got a very long neck. Uh, the head is shaped mostly like a German Shepherd, pointed ears, extended snout, uh, double row teeth. Uh, the back set's a lot smaller than the front, a lot smaller, but it's there. Uh, it's through ripping. And are very aggressive. That would be the tail anywhere from two foot to four foot. Just depends on what they, what they, uh, I guess the lineage of where they've been bred or, uh, you know, the breeding of them. Uh, if you remember Raphael, he was, he was nine and a half feet tall. And he was, he had a different appearance to him than most of them. He was, his, his jaw, jaws was more extended and he was black totally in color. Uh, his eyes was demonic. Uh, he was, he had got to the point where, you know, you could, we could go in with him, but, you know, you still had to have somebody there at all times. You couldn't turn your back on him. Uh, and, uh, but he was of a larger breed. I kind of feel like he was like uh, what Luke had seen out there in that one story that Luke had seen of that one one, that one that had the red eyes uh, that him and his wife had came across. Yeah, the demonic but, one. Yeah, the demonic one, yeah. But the uh, the average ones is what I first described. 
that would be an average stock man. And like I said, they're very aggressive. Uh, and if they are approaching you and not being aggressive, all they're doing is setting you up for a later fall. Uh, that's, that's their mentality. And that's, they started packing and that's why we're bringing them in now and taking them down. We move on to the werewolf. Uh, a full grown male, average height be seven foot ten to right at nine foot would be a good height for an average werewolf. Human legs, feet like a human with short toes and it's got like dog claws or nails on the toe nails and uh, can run approximately 45 to 48 miles an hour. Waist is like a human's and then the body goes up to the shoulders. It's like a V. You know, like a 34 inch waist and 58 inch chest, you know, just the V. The upper portion is very muscular. Arms are huge, 24, 26 inch arms. Uh, a little longer than, a little longer than the uh, humans are, or that would be in proportion to what a human of that height would be, you know, their arms are a little longer. Uh, claws are not hardly as long as that of a dog man. They, on their hands, they, they probably average inch and three quarters to two and a half inches long, two and three quarters inches long. They're not near as long, but they're a whole lot stouter and they can cut through metal like it's not even there. I mean, I, I, we've seen them go through quarter-inch plate steel and uh, to get out. And they could, we had uh, took years to get the enclosures where we could keep them right uh, without putting stuff in their food to keep them sedated. And uh, then you come up to the head. It's regular neck, thick neck, thick, thick muscles on the neck. Uh, regular size head, just like a human's. Little pointed ears. Not on top of the head, but to the side like a human's, but they've got a slight point to them. The face is flat. <laughs> The nose is pointed up slightly. Uh, the mouth is protruded out maybe a half to three quarters of an inch. No, you won't call it a muzzle. I, I wouldn't because it don't protrude out that far. It's got a heavy growl. The only place there's no uh, hair or fur is right underneath the eyes and on the uh, cheeks. They're light on hair. The chest is light on hair. The belly is light on hair. <clears throat> the legs, the front of them are light on hair. The back of the legs, the hair looks like it's uh, flowing, wavy, like six inches long, and very pretty. And uh, the female's hair gets a lot longer. 
and it's just it's almost feels like uh, silk. The females does just soft as can be. They are very, very warm to be up against if you ever get that opportunity. And that's a good basic description of the werewolf. No tail. No tail. Just like a human. Walks just like a human. Talks just like a human. Communicates. It's got human intelligence. <clears throat> there was and they're a... high, highly intelligent. I, um, just recently I was... Uh, I didn't narrate it on this channel, but it was in the second volume of the audiobook that I did. Um, a guy had a, I think it was in, I want to say Michigan, I'd have to go back and look, uh, somewhere up north, and he was actually working on a guest house he saw the creature twice the second time or more than twice but the second time he saw the creature he was inside of the house it was a really small house just for you know if a family came to visit um he was in the kitchen putting a new fridge in and he saw the creature ran and locked the door and kind of uh, tapped on the window and the wall and the, the thing looked right at him and he immediately got petrified sat on the floor but could have sworn that he heard vocalization uh, he said it almost was not English and then throughout the story um, his mom and dad uh, finally realize that he's not making it up and they see it they're at a barbecue um, at their house and a guest is over and her husband had just recently passed so she's staring out and she sees this creature <clears throat> and he doesn't mention the vocalization to her at all but she ends up saying we've heard and my ex-husband or my my husband that passed away um he before he passed heard dialect from these creatures out behind their house when you know it was summertime the window would be open um which is you know it's very interesting because you don't hear a lot of encounters when they hear these creatures using any dialect so, and then Zach, of course, uh, from Alabama had his encounter, so. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, most time the encounters happen so quick that, you know, there's, there's not time for it to happen. So, that's a lot of it right there. Uh, now the... But, the scale of danger. So right now we're at a dog man at the danger scale of one to ten. What what would you rank the dog man? Ten. Of uh, being aggressive yeah. towards humans. Yep. He's he's the most aggressive towards humans. Okay. Yes. And then the werewolf falls where about on a scale of one to ten? Well, if they came from the breeding program. They should be non-aggressive toward the human okay. if they came from the breeding program. Okay. They should be non-aggressive toward the human. If they're from the wild, they could be off the scale. They could be a 10. Okay. Uh, most of what we see when we have trouble out of one in, in the breeding program wasn't perfect. But when we see them, that we're, you know, that we have to go after them, 
most of them that we have trouble with are wild, not from the breeding program when we have to go after a werewolf. But there is occasions when we do have to go after one that is from the breeding program. And it does happen. So uh, I would give it an overall ranking of three. Okay. And that's where I do the werewolf at. Okay. And then on to the Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Average height for a Bigfoot is anywhere between 8 foot 6 and 12 foot. Anywhere in weight from 600 pounds to 1,100 pounds. They are covered in different colors of fur. They walk upright. They do travel on fours like an ape at times. They don't do it for long distances. You know, they put their fists down and travel like a, more like a gorilla than a than anything, and they walk upright, long strides, they can travel at a high rate of speed, they can probably do 30, 30, 35 miles an hour, <clears throat> they can, people say they're telepathic and can vanish in it seems like they're about away. It, it does seem that way because I've, I've had them in my sights and then blink my eyes and they're gone and can't find them anywhere. So I, I don't have a good answer for it. Uh, they're covered in four, about four different colors of fur, brown, black, blonde, and you'll see an occasional white one. It ranges in length from anywhere from four inches to nine or ten inches. Uh, they are not aggressive towards humans unless you walk right up on them or you do something to a young or you start some violence towards them. They, they just don't show aggression towards you unless you startle them. Or, you know, just put them in a bad situation. And then, if you've done that to them, it gets really bad really fast. And they are... They are the strongest of all the of all the big three. They can probably it probably take twenty men to hold one big foot, and uh, if that's if everybody could get hold of it at one time, you know, and that would be a hard thing to do. Uh, they have no tail. They live in what we call pods, small groups. Uh, there's a leader in every pod, an alpha. And uh, he's not hardly ever challenged. And these pods, you know, when, when the young grow up, they break off and go, create their own and find them a territory. They normally range about 25 miles center to center uh, for their territory. Uh, 
sometimes food, they have to move more than that. And with the way things have got of late with the population explosion, you know, they're traveling more now than ever. And uh, we're getting more sightings, but they're not aggressive aggressive sightings. <clears throat> but a lot of the sightings that we're getting now, I think people are seeing uh, werewolves, not Bigfoot. And there's misrepresent, you know, mis uh, identification because the two are so close. The werewolf and the Bigfoot are so close. Uh, basically, almost the same face. The mouth is not as protruded on the Bigfoot as it is on the werewolf, but it's got the big heavy brow like the werewolf. Got same type of eyes, nose. Well, the nose, you know, is flat on the big foot. But everything else, basically the same. Big foot don't have a neck. You know, it's just shoulders and a head, seems like. And uh, they're just massive. I've, I've seen. Uh, 58 inch across the shoulders. Wow. Shoulder to shoulder. Biggest of things. That's almost five foot. Yeah. What's the tallest that you've seen? The 12 foot 10. Hmm. That's the tallest I've seen. That's, that's, bigger than a, that's bigger than a one story building. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's right, looked in, and then, you know, after that, we go into the giants of the northeast up there, so, but that's the basic breakdown of the appearance of the big tree. Now, when you said giants of the northeast, are you referring to the? I mean, north northwest. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> now the um, because so many people have heard the one uh, where you were dispatched up to Alaska. That do you do you think that could have been a Sasquatch or way too big? Because I know some people have asked questions about that if you thought that was a Sasquatch or what or something the, different. The one there in Idaho, Montana in Canada. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Canada. Where the tracks were just immense and you Yeah, yeah twenty two inch tracks. Yeah. Yeah, that was in Idaho and Montana and Canada. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh Tracks like that would represent something 18 to 20 foot tall. And, you know, they, they think, and people, you know, I lost, we lost three agents to that. You know, when I went up there and found the guns, I mean, 300 casings, and the guns are just bent to pieces. And, you know, there's, there's, all, all we got is these tracks that I can't go into Canada, and they just lead right back into Canada. And every time, they, every time we get calls on it up there, and it comes from the same area every time. And, uh, you know, they just, they just come into the U.S., and they'll come down about seven or eight miles, and it's in... It's in a 30 mile radi 30 mile stretch up there. They'll come inside the U.S. for about seven or eight miles. 
message far down as they come. It seems like when we hit the area up there, it, it either knows or goes back to Canada, and we can't follow it into Canada. So, but uh, that is a large creature, and I would like to see myself what it is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of... um. I know a lot of people have been talking about the, um, the the Nephilim, and there's just a uh, a show called uh, the the Tribe of Giants. It's not a show; it's a movie or something like that. And uh, it's pretty much the archaeology, you know, an archaeology dig. Um, in North America, where they uncovered some absolutely huge bones and skulls, and very interesting uh, movie. And you know, they there was no the the archaeologist who was doing it and anthropologist who was doing it did not mention that there was any kind of correlation between a uh, primate bone or body design with these so they were pretty much saying this is a completely different you know being than uh some sort of primate and you know we humans fall into that category as well so it's definitely something different than us um but and then that, that was interesting too because you had mentioned the like the the uh, sound vibrations or whatever out there, like in the for a, a radius where it was quiet or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh goodness! I forget where that was. Anyway, yeah, it was right. It vibrates you. Yep. The whole, whole thing would just, it, it screams in, in the vibration and you couldn't locate it. And that was, you know, I, I, I know I was seven or eight miles from it, had to be. And the vibration just came down that, I was in a, I was between two mountains. And it came down between them two mountains and hit me, this scream. And literally, you could feel the vibration. And uh, that will make you stop and think before you take another step. Yeah, yeah. What's in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Like a Tyrannosaurus Rex or something. You, yeah, I mean, and uh, you know, we talk about these giants up there. Well, look at uh, Kate's Cove. Yeah, we got the the Neanderthals out of there. You know, we we took uh, thirteen total bodies out from there. So uh, it was. It was uh, a good day for us there, but uh, that was something that I never thought I'd see. Right. And uh, people, you know, they just, I mean, never even gave us no mind. Walk down the front of us, walk down the road, let us follow them straight. They was ready to defend them. But, I mean, it's, it's, and I mean, all them tourists up there, I mean, they, they know they had to be, be insane. So. Now, that actually brought me to a question I was actually going to ask um, you when, because, you know, we were just talked about the, the big three, and then we yep. got into the giant, but you never got to see that. Um, the, the Neanderthal or caveman family was a definite weird one for you to witness um yeah 
Has there been any other things that you can actually talk about now that that have actually scared you? Well, uh, it's actually scared me. Uh, yeah, I had one that uh, I don't know if it scared me or upset me or what, but it was it. I I can't. I'll give as much detail as I can. Okay. <clears throat> This happened in California. And I've told you about it. Yeah. So you know about it. And uh, this farmer out there was having uh, the laborers from down Mexico come up there. And they was getting injured by something at night, and a couple of them had been killed. And he was having animals killed and all this. And nobody was saying nothing, and but nobody could figure it out. And finally, we got the call to go out there, and I personally went. And uh, I spent three or four days out there before I, I even found the track and I stayed on this one farm because they said this is where everything's happening and it was a coastal place and I was working 20 hours a day trying to you know find something and uh, on about the fifth night I laid down about 11 or 12 o'clock at night I was going to get some rest and all of a sudden, there's this blood clerk in the spring. And I grabbed my rifle, pistol, just started running down through there trying to find it. And I found this man standing down there. And his right arm was cut off below the elbow. And uh, he took his other hand and pointed. And I took off running because I know where it was headed to. I know I had to get ahead of it. So I ran, 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 and I ran straight to the ocean. And when I got to the ocean, I just turned. And that's where I was going to make my stand because I know he was going to the ocean. And uh, I didn't know what it was or where it was going to come out, but I know that. There was about a 300 yard area right there where he was going to come in through. And all of a sudden it broke through the timber and here it came straight at me almost. I had to run about 40 yards to my right. Got in front of it and it stopped. And I stopped. It looked just like a human being. Except its arms looked like, looked like big old wide. like five inch wide blades or flippers or whatever what you want to call them. It didn't have no fingertips, didn't have nothing. It was just like they was as long blades. Uh, hard fiber, I guess is what you'd call it. And started swinging at me and swinging at me and I just kept backing up. I was talking talking and it wasn't doing no good and finally I just lifted my 458 and put it around through the head and it went down and it was thrashing and thrashing and thrashing and thrashing. I walked up there and put another round through the chest where the heart where I thought the heart was and it quit then and we we got a Chopper from uh, from uh, Camp Pendleton down there to come up there and pick it up. Took it down in 
organization by plane to Virginia. And as far as I know, they're still studying that one to this day. But I didn't, I mean, to look at something that looked just like me except for the arms. And you could see the blood, you know, on, on whatever you call it. I call it its arms because that's what it looked, I mean, that's what it was in the place of. I just couldn't understand what was, what I was seeing, you know, but it never responded to any of my commands. So I have no regret in what I done about that one. Yeah, yeah, and me and so, you have talked about that a couple of different times. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, I asked, do you think it was a reptilian, um, which you don't know, because there, you don't know yet, like you said. No, we don't. We um, don't know yet. Which now yeah. brings me to the next thing. Um, because a lot of people love hearing about the reptilians. Uh, have you heard anything more on the reptilians as of late? We had a, probably, I was, I was dark when this happened, but they had an update that came in on the population of them in the, U.S. and it was down to like forty-five thousand. Hmm. So they're getting fewer and fewer. Right. Last yeah. night I did a uh, I did a subscriber um, encounter, and she she was in Illinois, and she one hundred percent believes and a very very descriptive uh description of the the it was a police officer and pulled her over uh the eyes were very lizard like um they blink it, it blinked obviously different and there was a second fold of like a a translucent skin between the main eyelid and the second eyelid, which was very interesting to me because, you know, it's just, it just goes to show that they actually, you know, they can. They're out there. Yeah. And They're infiltrate there. the, you know, the, the populace like that is, is amazing, you know, just yeah. to, to, uh, preserve their species i mean you know something's killing them it's not it's not it's not you it's not your teams it's no it, whether it be the uh it might be environmental you know it might have been a you know perfect place for them a long time ago or just a yeah like it a could quick, be yeah so who knows? Yes, yeah, so I've actually thought about that. This one time was probably the perfect, perfect place for. Her. And things has changed in the past 50, 60 years. And I think that's what's killing them off. Yeah. Global warming or anything, you know, could be changing, changing their position. Yeah, definitely. Um. I don't know why I've never asked this question, whether it be me and you just talking or uh, on one of our Q and A's, but it's just popped into my head. Um, so let's say the team is, you know, where you guys are at and you guys get a call. Uh, have you guys ever gotten a call about, um, or in the vicinity of a reservation and misidentification of a dog man, werewolf, but have it be a shapeshifter. Has that ever happened? Yes. Yeah, in Arizona. 
Yep. Does that happen Three. often or just? Uh, it's happened to me twice. Uh, and I know it's happened to all the agents. Uh, and some of them, some of them more than once or twice, you know. Uh, yeah, it happens. Now, at that point, yeah. you're dealing with something that's supernatural. Yeah, yeah. How do you go? Really? How do you go about? Do you just walk away, or do you try to pursue? Uh, you try to pursue, but you do it in a different manner. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um. Let me think. Now, how about um, flying cryptids, uh, Mothman? I know there's been a rash of, because I had Lon Strickler on uh, a couple weeks ago, and he himself is just, he's fascinated with everything in the paranormal or cryptid community. Um, but the one thing that he has a big obsession with is flying humanoid cryptids. Um, have you ever had any dealings with those? We had a call this past week from West Virginia about Mothman. And we had two agents go down there, identified, located, but they couldn't they couldn't get close enough to take a shot. They couldn't uh intercept it and they couldn't uh locate it again after the first two nights. But the first two nights it made itself presentable, open, uh but when they first seen it at close ranges, when they tried to maneuver to get a shot, you know, they wasn't ready and they had to, had to maneuver to get their rifles. It took off at high rate of speed, several hundred yards from them, and watched them, and they could see it watching. Hmm. And that was, that was, two weeks ago. They're definitely a creepy, creepy uh, organism, whatever it is. A lot of speculation, yeah. thinking that it could be possibly uh, alien or supernatural or whatever. Um, who, who honestly every, knows. every time I get a call from something over like that, what comes to my mind is uh, that movie, uh, Jeepers Creepers. Yeah. That's what comes to my mind. Yep. Exactly. Uh, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Let's see. Uh. Encrypted there, there, there. Um. What? Have you ever, uh, well out in the field have you personally witnessed um any of the big three uh coming into contact with each other uh like so let's say dog man in in contact with sasquatch dog man in contact with werewolf dog man or werewolf in contact or contact with sasquatch I've seen them all come in contact with one another at a time, at certain times. Most of the time, they'll go their own way. Now, if a werewolf and Bigfoot are in the same area, and it is the Bigfoot's area, as long as the werewolf just taking what he's needing and moving through, the Bigfoot will let him pass through without any trouble. Now, dog man, it's a different story. If Bigfoot and dog man see one another, 
there's going to be trouble. You know, I don't know if it's just bad blood. It seems like when the Bigfoot sees the dog man, like they just he just heads for him. I mean, he 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 just he pushes him out of the area, either by force or by running him out of the area. You know, just he's gonna make him move. He ain't gonna let him stay in his area. But there's not near as many Bigfoot as there is dogman. Not near close enough. Uh, and the way they're packing up now, uh, a single Bigfoot would need to be very selective of picking his fight. You know? Right, yeah. Um, speaking of the, the packing up, uh, I just, I, I'm always reading articles or researching stuff. Um, I stumbled across this thing that wolves seldom do, but they do, and they're called super packs, where they, they actually, a bunch of small packs join forces and turn into a large there was a uh, super pack sighting in um, a small town in Russia, uh, like Arctic Russia, maybe by Siberia, and almost 400 wolves running together in this super pack. Um, and they, it's only been reported or recorded uh, maybe once or twice. Um, in history, you know, I'm sure it's been, I'm sure it's happened more than that, but um, observed, and it actually, these things descended upon a town, and caused, I mean, there was children were killed going to school, um, and, you know, there was, there was precautions put out in towns and stuff. Uh, has there ever been anything like that not like a super pack but um like a dog man a small dog man pack have, have they ever descended on on a small town and caused hell for that town ever without naming the town and stuff like that well i can name the town but, uh well i'll say this pennsylvania uh had a super pack, yeah, and uh, it was it was a bad bad night that night. But uh, uh, yeah, Pennsylvania had a super pack. We went into it in clean house on it. And, uh, But that's the only we, we we've went into some that's had seventy five eighty, and then we'll get some, you know, thirty forty, and occasionally we'll get one that's got a hundred. But that one had, I don't know, four hundred fifty five hundred. All in one, the area. That's crazy. That is. Yeah. It's terrifying. Yeah. Um, now, as of right now, uh, there are natural or wild dogmen. I know that you were talking about. Uh, the ending of the breeding program and pulling the dog men in breeded one or the uh yeah the chipped ones um is that going to be hard after the chipped ones come in to go out and get rid of the non-chipped ones yeah uh if i 
mean, then it's going to come down to something's going to have to happen for us to go out and get them. And uh, just like, you know, we we would normally be doing, but since we, we're, I'm calling in uh, 500 a day right now. I've done up the game and getting there everything as, as fast as I can. And when we see them packing, we just call that whole packing. You know, if we see 101 pack now, we just go ahead and call that whole pack. And uh, so far, we, we, we've got one group that's got 28 in it. It's not responding. And I guess we're going to go down there and uh, take all the agents and go down there and see if we can get them. But uh, they're in Georgia. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, okay. So I'm pretty much out of questions uh, off the top of my head. Is yep. there anything? I got about 20 more minutes. We've been recording for about an hour now. Um, is there anything that you want to you want to discuss for a couple minutes? Uh. Oh yeah. How about this? Um. If one of the three descend on you while you're camping, let's say a dog man. Let's say you're camping with your family. A dog man descends on your campsite. What to do? Okay, just if a dog man descends on you, best thing to do if you're not prepared and don't have the proper firearm, just don't make eye contact. Keep your head down and just you know, kind of glance up every once in a while. See where it's at. Don't don't lift your head. Just you know, glance up. Just move your eyes. But don't make eye contact with it. Stay as still as you can. You know, look for something close to you. If you, 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 if he decides to make that move, hopefully he'll get tired of you not looking at him because that's what he's going you to do. He's going you to look at you where he can see you in the eyes, see see what your intentions are. But if you don't have a gun and you know, don't don't make eye contact. And if you got kids, I, I know it's going to be hard, but try to keep them from screaming. And uh, women, try to keep them from screaming. And uh, it, it's hard. And I, I wouldn't be able to keep my grandkids from screaming. And I know it. So, but I, I try to stay ready. You know, we're out camping, and I've got advantages because I know the situations, and I know what needs to be done, and my senses about the situation and everything from years of it help me. But if if it does, just keep your head down. Don't look, make eye contact. Hopefully, we we'll lose interest and walk away. If you don't, try to find you something to defend yourself with. If it does attack, you got a knife, whatever you find yourself to defend yourself with, go for the neck. Go for the neck. If you ain't got a gun, go for the neck. Okay. And if you're cutting at it or if you're going to hit it, go even go for the neck or... Try to poke an eyeball out. Anything like that. Uh, you know, if you're just bare fist, just try to poke an eyeball out. Uh, because uh, you, you just, if one attacks you, you ain't really got much of a chance unless you've got something in your hands. Right. Uh, right. No. And that's just the uh, honest truth. Is that go for werewolf and Sasquatch as well? No eye contact or no eye contact with a werewolf at all. 
and a Bigfoot, if you make eye contact with it, it's going to leave. Okay. Yeah, it'll leave. Bigfoot will. Now, they are, they are timid from, you know, but the, now, uh, 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 werewolf from the breeding program will make eye contact with you and not, a, not, not hurt you or leave. But if it's a wild one, it's a different story. It's the same thing as the dog man. So you got that. Three percent or thirty percent, whatever which way you want to look at it. And uh, it gets it gets down into just keeping you keeping yourself calm. Try not to let it sense that you're scared, or, uh, but not looking at them is the biggest thing. Okay. Now, um, and that, that, so, I mean, <clears throat> I wonder if, uh, the one that, um, Zach down in Alabama, the one that actually protected him from, uh, the dog man there, I wonder if that was from the breeding program. I would just bet that it said something. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, and it said it wrong, but instead of, it said, protect me, and it, it both said, I'm here to protect you. It's what it should have said. Mm. If I'm remembering right on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now a lot has changed because. He hasn't seen it. Well, I haven't actually gotten an update from him in a long time. Um, last I knew, he hadn't seen what well, he was calling it, Buddy. Um, yeah, Buddy. And he hadn't seen it since that one day where he had to actually shoot his truck window out. Um, but yeah, that's 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 absolutely crazy. So I didn't hear that when I had to go back and look at that one yeah he, there's a picture right on the uh on the video I'll, I'll i'll send you a link to it after we get done with this okay um is there anything that you want to touch basis on really quick um and uh just kind of address uh me, this is me as a person to everybody, okay? This is, this is Victor, this is Victor. This ain't, isn't the general, this is Victor. I am worried with the new administration coming in. And I will probably not serve under the new administration. So I am making plans to retire early in January. And I have decided to do what everybody has suggested. And I'm going to write a book. So that's going to be great. That's going to be my future plans. So that's just something I just wanted to live right now. Well, that'll be absolutely amazing. And when you get working on it, please let me know in that way. I will. You're going to have to help me with it. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can uh, let every know, everybody know when the book is out and where to get a copy of that book um, because it's okay. just going to be great. So, well, we are almost coming up on about 71 minutes. Um, okay. I'm, I know that the last thing that you usually say is 
to always enjoy nature and that these encounters are freak encounters. They're very seldom, and uh, but to go and enjoy nature. That's right. Um, is there anything that you'd like to end tonight with? Well, you just you just said it. Everybody, get out, and go out there in the wild and enjoy yourselves. And uh, if it does happen, just bow your heads, and stay calm. And chances are, it, it, you know, it might not even see. You. And, uh, you know, just do what you have to do. But, like I said, get out in nature. Kids need it. Everybody needs it. Absolutely. That right there, just before we end this, um, there's a lot of people that <clears throat> don't, there are people that don't like to have firearms, that don't like firearms. Um, what if um, people who camp and hike carried in their backpack, very accessible though, a flare gun? Would that do anything? Possibly frighten one away? Uh, you mean shoot it into them? Uh, shoot it at them, shoot it up in the air, shoot it somewhere. Well, uh, I, I, the only thing I'd have against the flare gun, if you shot it at them, and it goes into the woods, you're going to start a fire. Right. And so I only draw back to it. Of course, it's going to probably run off because it ain't going to know what that is. And, the, you know, they, they are going to, they're probably run from it. Uh, but if you shot it up in the air, I don't think they're going to run from it. So, I, I'd be about, nah, I, I wouldn't really count on a flare gun, but myself. Okay. Well, I was just saying, because some people don't, you know, like, they yeah, have some people don't like guns. And, right. Yeah. Right. Whether it be their uh, own personal or having kids around or whatever. So, yeah. Just an idea. Uh, Air horns. It's, yep. Th that's a deterrent. Okay. Uh, that for people that don't like guns, uh, the the really good bear spray. But I mean, a canister of really good bear sprays, a hundred bucks nearly. Yeah. Of course, that's better than being dead. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like you're going to have to continuously buy it. You buy a can, you put it in your pack, yeah. and you, you've you yeah. got it. So Yeah, you might not deploy it for four or five years. Right. So. Well, all right, I just wanted to, I just, that just popped into my head right before. Because yeah. I remember a while back we were talking about you know, what people should carry who don't like to have firearms and just yeah. popped into my head. So, well, it's been wonderful having you on tonight. All right, folks, that was tonight's second half. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is your support, after all, that helps the channel to continue to grow and go. And honestly, what well, gives people a place to share their experiences, ideas, and theories, judgment, and ridicule free, simply treated with the respect that they all deserve, we all deserve, excuse me. God, great information from a great man. I really do miss Victor. And for those of you who have never heard this upload, I hope you enjoyed it. And for those of you who have, I hope you guys enjoyed it still. Uh, I know that when I miss Victor, miss hearing him, uh, I will listen to an old upload from him because he really became a good friend of mine 
and uh, man, he is missed. All right, guys, once again, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real, they're out there, and they are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers, and God bless.